Welcome to Golden Isles TV. I'm Avery Brooks and I'm here with Julie Martin, uh, City Commissioner and Mayor Pro Tem for the City of Brunswick. And we're thrilled to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So today um, we're, we're going to air the show in the month of April. So we're really just talking about um, what you do, your role as, as City Commissioner, um, Mayor Pro Tem talk to us about that and then we'll get into kind of you know spring projects in the city anything you want to touch on or events coming up or um i know that you are very involved with the squares um you had did such a beautiful job and so we want to talk about that as well so so there you go all right well uh, i'll start off with uh what is what are the duties of a mayor pro tem every year the commission appoints uh, one of the full commission as a mayor pro tem and basically what that position means is any time that the mayor cannot be more than one place at a time um, you know speaking um, handing out a proclamation whatever it might be then i step in and play the role of the of the mayor if you will in in those duties so it's um it's it's just you know an extra layer perhaps of involvement but um, our mayor Johnson does stay pretty busy and sometimes there's so much going on that he can't be everywhere at one time. So that's really the role of a uh, mayor pro tem. And then again, too, if the mayor's not able to attend one of our commission meetings for whatever reason, then I step in and play the role of the mayor during the commission meeting. So, um, so, so that's, that's, a, big, that role. that's a big job, really. I mean, that's it a can big be. Job. I, I, our mayor does stay very busy because he does have a full time job as well uh, with the state chamber. And especially when legislation is in session, the legislators are doing their thing. Then he's up in Atlanta a lot. So. Um, right. But it's it's a um, it's a fun job. It's a fun job. You get to do all kinds of different things. So it's yeah. enjoyable. You kind of have to be ready for anything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the most little fun snippets that I got to do was to uh, welcome the contestants, all the finalists for the spelling bee recently. Oh, wow. So that was back in either early March or late February. So that was interesting. And then I got to stay and watch the, uh, the final competition of the spelling bee before they move on to the regional level. So that was fun. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun but thing. as far as the city, we have a lot going on right now. And spring, there's always a lot of fun activity because we're we're sort of rolling into the final stretch of our fiscal year. So our fiscal year ends June 30th. So now we're we're trying to finish up projects and making sure we're on track with not only the projects that we've got scheduled for the year, but then also looking towards the beginning of the next fiscal year because we've got SPLOS money that will be coming in. And so SPLOS 2022, most of those projects will now start to have money funneling into them. And depending on the size of the project and the, you know, how we're going to allocate it, then some of those projects would start. And I would say, you know, right now we're one of the biggest things is we've had, multiple million dollars invested in our downtown area. So one of the things that we're doing is we're, we're raising the bar on maintenance of our historic squares, for instance, and how, you know, being neat and tidy and really looking at things through a different lens so that we as a public infrastructure are meeting the needs and exceeding the needs of all this new investment now. We've got folks coming downtown. We've got new restaurants that's, that have been opened, a boutique hotel, the Crest. Uh, we have our first rooftop venue. So there's there's a lot of excitement. Several buildings have been redone. Uh, they've added additional commercial um, opportunities, but also residential, because we do have a very strong pull towards folks that want to live downtown. So the, that's been been great to see. Another big thing that the city's going to be working on is pulling back under the city's purview our recreation at Howard Coffin Park. So 
we're looking forward to, uh, you know, bringing that back on board. That'll be around Labor Day um, because most of the uh, sports and different things have already been lined up through the county. So we look forward to doing that and being able to offer ro robust programs for our kids and getting that all back on track. So I think that's going to be a good thing. Um, let's see. We've got renovation of Wright Square underway, where old Glen Middle School was when it was torn down. The city was able uh, to reclaim that property, the northern half of Wright Square, uh, as through a land swap with the Board of Education. So that's under construction now, and we'll be able to continue to work on that. And then that will, uh, Wright Square, we will work into the renovation of Satella Square and then Hillary Square. So we, we've got those kind of um, stacked so, up, ready to go. Three, yeah. new square, three new squares are being three added. New squares. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. The one that we most recently finished was the one of the quadrants of Queen Square. Mm -hmm. So we purposefully started in the downtown area um, almost 20 years ago now, because we knew if we could renovate that green space that and those historic assets that we have, that it would be a real draw for redevelopment. And so it's been great to see that traction start to take hold and come to fruition, especially having gone through the, the recession that we went through and then despite COVID. So I feel like, you know, we, our head starts to poke above and then we get Trump back down and we have to, you know, get back up again. So right. um, we've, we've, it's, it's been really great to see all of that occur um, because we did spend a lot of time as a commission during the recession, putting things in place to help spur redevelopment as we came out of the recession, you know, the enterprise zone stabilization, um, loan for downtown buildings that needed um, extra money spent just to stabilize them in order to renovate them. And then opportunity zone, enterprise zone, as I mentioned, and different types of funding, facade grant money and jumpstart money. And so lots of really great programs, uh, not only through the city, but also through our downtown development authority. And then you know, our URA is now working towards URA, excuse me, it's Urban Redevelopment Agency is working now with uh, plans for the redevelopment of the Oglethorpe block. So hopefully that will be announced and some of those plans will start to come out into the public realm so people know what's going to go on there. Because that is a key, a key property right there, especially as people are coming in on 341 towards that split of Bay and Newcastle directly into our downtown area. And we want to be able to connect with the waterfront through that project as well. And certainly the tourists, um, Brunswick Landing Marina, uh, are certainly have been good stewards of their uh, property. And, you know, they've made a lot of improvements there. Um, we we like to think that the boaters coming in and out of the marina are part of our population because they they come and they stay for extended periods of time. You can see them walking around our downtown area, eating in the restaurants, participating in events. So they're very much a part of our population and we enjoy having them. We also have two different cruise lines uh, that come into port right there at Mary Ross Park. So we now have folk, more folks coming in by water and they will be in port uh, for two to three days. So you can also see them walking downtown because our downtown is very walkable, visiting the squares, taking in the history, looking at some of the historic buildings, walking through our historic district. So those are all really great things that we've seen come to fruition through um, really a lot of renovation and, and restoration of not only homes, but downtown properties. Um, I would say too, you know, we, we, we are trying to look holistically at the homeless situation. 
We are very aware of the effect it's having on um, businesses and just that, that feeling of safety. And so, you know, you can, it's not a one spot shot kind of a fix. You, you really have to look at the four different types of homelessness and putting programs in place, which the city has to help prevent homelessness. If, if people are um, really for whatever reason, stretched on their available funds temporarily for housing, whether it's rental mortgage, et cetera, the city does have a program that we've partnered with another nonprofit. Um, and we have some funding to help people get through a couple of months where they just need a leg up and helping them stay in the, the property that they're currently in. So it's, it's, you know, you've got mental health issues and you've got addiction issues and it's, it's a very complicated um, subject matter to really look at all the nonprofits we have in our community and who is providing services that meet some of the needs, none of them meet all of the needs of our homeless population. So it, ta it takes a lot of behind the scenes effort to come up with a program. We're looking at other communities too. We, uh, there were about 10 of us that traveled up to Savannah <coughs> to uh, meet with their land bank folks, their homeless authority um, in multiple different agencies to see how they have formulated and, and organized their homeless agency and, you know, how, how they work with folks to, you know, get them into permanent housing if, if that's what they choose. And, and so they've been successful with that. So we're, we're looking at, at Savannah and then LaGrange and some other communities that have done some good things because it, you, you can't ignore the situation. It, it is a national issue. It's a city, it's a county issue. So we're trying to uh, work with the county and the city together to put, put those programs into place. Um, yeah, I know um, Regina, uh, the city manager, we've talked about this is an issue that we've talk about a lot because it is so important and so relevant um, right now, but just the fact that the county is working with the city and there was a homelessness summit recently mm -hmm. um, and just trying to kind of get everybody together to brainstorm. But that's interesting that you're taking cues and going to visit other cities that have done some good things. So it sounds like it's a, it's an, a, you're being very proactive. Um, when it comes to well, that. we're trying to, it's just, it's hard to stay that step ahead. Um, I think the, the situation with, with some of the, I'm not going to mention specifics, but some of the services that we provide have been a real magnet um, for homeless people too. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not they actually use the service, they get here, some of them are dropped off at the county line to find their way into the downtown area. So it's, um, you know, in a lot of situations, these folks need a, a caseworker to, to follow them down the track and make sure that they are held accountable in taking medication if they need medication for a myriad of different things. So it's, it, it's um, you, you need to work with the group, but then you have to work with them also as individuals because there's something a little different about each person and their story and their history and where they want to go. You know, they may, they may not really want a home. They want to stay off grid. And yeah, that that's an interesting point that we have not talked about before is the fact that homelessness is such a big, broad um, problem, but that, that it's really about the individual. And I think that must be the biggest hurdle is that each individual needs that attention and needs a, like you said, a, a really somebody to stay with them. And yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of them just think day to day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would, that would be the natural thing, but to then try to get them to think, well, where do you want to be in a week, a month, six months, five years, you know, and kind of get them to expand out far enough to, 
you know, look beyond where they are, where they are right now is, you know, do they want to stay on this continuum or do they really want to be somewhere closer to a sister, a brother, a, you know, whatever it might be and right. find out where they want to be and how they want to get there and work with them. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a big job. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it definitely, definitely is. And right now too, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We do have some large redevelopment projects coming up out of the ground along Glen Avenue, Highway 17 area. Um, back in 2014, the commission worked very diligently and had huge amount of public input for creating a design overlay district in that area. That is, you know, coming right along the eastern edge of, of the peninsula part of the city with the, um, you know, intercoastal waterway right there. So to us, it was a, a great opportunity to set the stage for appropriate redevelopment along that stretch so that we could take advantage of those marsh views and the beauty of our, of our coastal area and not turn our back to it as so often happens when you put storefronts in and they all face towards the street and there's no connection to that gorgeous, beautiful coastal environment beyond there. So we're um, now seeing a couple of projects come out of the ground and um, we've had a couple of commercial properties and they, I think, look very nice. But this will be our first uh, residential uh, property that's being being completely renovated. So are not not renovated but developed so it, it'll be great to see that continue to come up out of the ground and then um, how that public boardwalk might be incorporated into all of the properties along there that that can you can have sort of a meandering boardwalk that's open to the public so that you you do have public access to the water and the views um, and then those public access points. Um, you know, obviously people are going to own their property and their development, but you can provide public access that brings you from the street to the boardwalk. Um, so our urban redevelopment authority is uh, in charge of sort of creating a real tangible vision for what that would look like and how that boardwalk would uh, would work along the um, wetlands area and what that could do for that area and spurring redevelopment. So I think that'll be really fun to watch and see how all of that then gets redeveloped. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's, all the good things. Yeah, very exciting to think about that. And, it, you know, just like you said, sort of like taking advantage of the beauty that is already here. It's just a matter of putting it in the right place to take the most advantage of it. So it sounds like everything's going in that direction and everybody's um, on board with it. And, and it sounds like a great future. Yeah. And the other thing that's really nice about having an overlay district where you have more control over the aesthetics of what gets built and you know the size of signs and the amount of light and just how much you know where the parking is oriented mm -hmm. um, it does create a level playing field if you will um, or a level of expectation that any property owner can feel comfortable with knowing that if they spend x amount of money to redevelop their property they know that everyone else is going to be held to the same standard so it really creates a level playing field for all redevelopment as it reoccurs on that stretch which i think is great you don't you know if you if you end up with some uh, fast food restaurants or some some big box chains they have to meet the same guidelines. And so you end up with a, a storefront that doesn't necessarily look like their typical storefront because they've, they've had to stay within the guidelines of that overlay area. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, and, you know, some of the most beautiful cities in the world didn't just happen that way. They were planned. There were guidelines. There are rules of what you 
can and can't, you know, you could choose from four different colors that your building must be. And it has to be, you know, so it creates beauty for, for then, but also for the future. And, um, and it does give you, like you said, a level of, of, of security knowing that, okay, um, I can put my building here because I know the next person is going to also follow these same guidelines. And it just, it's, it's a great idea. So I love the idea of intentional redevelopment and intentional planning. So it's so important. Yeah, that's a great way to, to put it. And I think, I think the other thing that'll be really fun to watch is, is that character area, you know, what it, right now it's just sort of a blank canvas. It's a blank slate. So I, I think the intent too was to let that part of the city develop into its own character mm-hmm. and and have a distinct flavor uh, and and a name. We we need a name too. I'll just be very interested to have folks come up with a great name for that area, just like Old Town, or you know, you've got obviously downtown, but we've got. Um, different areas of town and it would be great to have that named so that people knew exactly where you were talking about and it had its own vibe and and um, and vibrancy as well I love that yes um, what about Mary Ross Park I know uh, any plan there's going to be a splash pad right put in well, <laughs> well there there was at one time but the commission um, and and, uh, city staff determined that Mary Ross Park was not the best place, uh, the best location for that, that it it really needed to be um, in a different area, especially because of the continued desire to have Mary Ross Park handle larger events. And so what, what was gonna happen was the splash pad, by the time you put a splash pad in, a playground in, restrooms um, and and pool equipment and everything else and then fencing it off for security, it just became too big of a footprint in Mary Ross Park. Mm -hmm. So actually Orange Park, which is north of Gloucester, used to have a swimming pool. And if you go to that park, you can still see where the swimming pool was, was filled in and no longer exists. So the commission unanimously decided to place the splash pad in Orange Park. And that really kind of gets it back into a residential area that's very accessible to a lot of people as well. So, you know, kids can walk over there. Um, That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so that is part of SPLOS 2022 is to get that installed uh, the pump and the pool and everything. I say pool, the splash pad um, and all the required equipment and uh, amenities that go with it installed. So hopefully we'll, we'll all be able to enjoy that before too much longer. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. Yeah. And I, once again, intentional planning. I mean, it's really, that's another example of, of making sure everything's in the right place, you know? Yes. Yeah. And then as far as Mary Ross Park specifically, we are um, have gotten approval for moving forward with phase two. So most of that is going to be the continuation of Gloucester Street as you come as you cross over Bay into the park area and that um, that roadway between the actual park and Mayor's Point the port. So we're softening that whole area. Um, the port does not have that many trucks coming in and out of there as they used to. They they enter at a different location. So we're going to be able to relandscape that and create an environment for food trucks to be able to pull up and different types of uh, events that, you know, will facilitate um, a nicer environment. Really, oh, so great. yeah, phase phase two of Mary Ross. It, yeah, yeah, and expanding some restroom capacity and different things like that. So that should be underway as well. And then you know, just 
milling and repaving streets and doing um, drainage ditch and, and stormwater management are huge um, as we as we continue forward and, and creating and redoing sidewalks as needed. Um, so those those are things that we don't want to overlook that we want to make sure we're maintaining our roadways appropriately as well as the rest of our public infrastructure for our citizens. Right. It sounds like a lot. It's like a lot of um, projects all at once to maintain and to think about new. Um, but it sounds like the city commission and um, is working with the county and everybody is really being um, thoughtful and intentional about all the plans and using the money wisely. So we appreciate um, your service and as city commissioner and mayor pro tem, and um, we're thrilled to have you today. Is there anything else you want to touch on before we close? Um, no, I would just encourage people to stay involved, go to meetings, um, try to keep up with what is going on. And, and we certainly like to hear an opinion and we'd like to know what we're doing well and what we're not doing well, because we, we want to be better and we want to be providing not just the services that our citizens want, but the level of service that our citizens want. So I think Regina McDuffie and our mayor uh, are just doing a stellar job. They've brought so much to the table for the city. Um, there's just a, a great energy uh, with just the commission, but also with staff. So everybody's working hard and uh, we're, we're all clicking along and I, I think everyone has a focused vision on making the city as best as it can be. I think so too. I, I feel that exact same way. There's such a great energy with the city, with the staff and people, you know, everybody's really not only cares, but excited about, mm -hmm. you know, what it can be. And, and where it could go. So we're, we're so excited to be a part of that. And I think these shows and letting people know, I know you can't talk about like every single thing, but at least it gives people um, a little bit of the vision that you have and, and communicating to the public, all these great things that are going on. So we are thrilled and um, please come back and join us again. I would love to. We would love to have you again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and um, hopefully that was a good little snippet of information and, and sort of hit on enough different topics that people have a good sense of, of direction and what we're doing. So thank you for the opportunity. You're welcome. No, it's perfect. We appreciate the information and we look forward to having you again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.